Okay, so we need to work on calculating this expression, basically. So we ha the first thing to take care of is the normal ordering, which is easy to do if we realize that, so my psi dagger goes as b dagger plus c, and my psi goes as b plus c dagger. But since my states only involve b particles, I all the terms involving my c's will cancel. Or not cancel, they'll, they'll just be zero. They won't give any overlap. So I can basically just throw those terms away. And so my psi dagger will go as b dagger and my psi will go as b. And remember for normal ordering, we just want to move all of our annihilation operators to the right. So to normal order this thing, I just need to move my size to the right since they contain the lowering operators. Uh, so this expression becomes this. And then I can insert an identity operator. So in principle, you can just evaluate this, you know, write everything out and use your commutation relations. I guess that, but that would, you would have to compute a, a lot of times and that might take a while. And even in the way that Tong does it, it still takes a while. Um, but so the way, he, the way he evaluates this is he inserts uh, in here an identity operator. So uh, if you remember from ordinary quantum mechanics, the identity operator is just the sum over this outer product sum over all possible states. And I've written it as in ordinary quantum mechanics. But you know, really, um, you know, in quantum field theory, this will be the sum over all multi-particle states, all one particle states, all two particle states of all different kinds of momenta. So I'm not even really sure how to write that out. Um, but uh, if we, the only thing we need to realize is that the only non-zero term in all this sum will be for the ground state. Uh, because if I have this ground state here, I will create two particles here. And so this, you know, this is a two particle state, so I need, it only has non-zero overlap with other two particle states. So that's what these two psi dagger, daggers will do to the vacuum state. And similarly, I have a ground state here, so I need to annihilate these two B particles with these two psi's to get uh, a non-zero overlap here. And so, for example, another term, you know, it would involve one particle states. Well, there, if I have a one particle state here, then I would create two particles in that one particle state. So I'd have a three particle state, and that would have zero overlap with this two particle state here. So, uh, so yeah, it's. Not too hard to convince yourself that this is, you know, in all this sum, this will be the only non-zero term. Uh, so we need to evaluate these things. But one thing we can notice is that this term is the complex conjugate, or the Hermitian conjugate, of this term. So... Um, I'll, we can really just worry about calculating one of these things, and then I can get find out what this is just by taking the complex conjugate and uh, exchanging p1 and p2 with p1 prime and p2 prime. So we want to work this out. This thing. And we do that, you know, we just write, expand our fields. Again, they're only proportional to b. So, you know, if you, it's just a matter of writing the things out. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a matter of plugging everything in, you get this. And you basically just have to do a lot of commuting here. So you have, I need to commute both of these lowering operators past these uh, raising operators to get to this vacuum state to annihilate. So you can do that, you know, work it out, kind of one commutation at a time, just picking up these two pi cubed and deltas. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, that's something you should probably work through on your own. And you can convince yourself that in the end, the only non-zero terms, or the only terms that are left will go like two pi to the six, and then these delta functions involving, um, you know, certain momentum terms. And um, yeah, so you get what Tong gets basically in his notes, um, 
this kind of thing. And so once we have that, again, we can compute this other term that we needed just by taking the complex conjugate. So basically just these minus i's become i's. And I exchange p1 with p1 prime and p2 with p2 prime. And now I need to multiply these things together. And that's just going to involve, you know, foiling these terms, which, you know, you can do that if you want, but Tong does write out what the answer is. So he writes it as this kind of thing, again, just involving these exponentials. And so it's these two terms and then plus another two terms where it's basically the same as these two terms, but x1 and x2 are switched. And if I call that e, then I can, so uh, again, what just to remind ourselves what we're doing, we're calculating this thing. So we found that this can be written in terms of this product, and we just evaluated what this product is. So we're going to plug that product in here. And if we do that, and also write out this contraction as our Feynman propagator, then we get uh, this thing. So I've written, I've called uh, this expression E, so that's here. And it's uh, basically, we have these integrals over space-time, and we have these exponential terms that look, well, you know, perfect for using with delta functions. So uh, it's not, again, it's not too hard to convince yourself, hopefully, I, mean, I say that, but you can work it out as much detail as you need to. I've certainly convinced myself that this works out. Um, basically, you have this integral of the space-time, and you have, for example, this term in ix1, p1 prime minus p1, and then also you have from the Feynman propagator an ikx1. So that will give me a four-dimensional delta function of p1 prime minus p1 plus k. And uh, then this term will give you this guy, and this one will give you these ones. And uh, another thing to notice is that since we have this integral over both x1 and x2, and in my expression here, this e thing, um, these other terms are just the same as the first terms, only with x1 and x2 exchanged, uh, those two terms will give you the same contributions. So they will just double up with these, what these terms give you. So I can take care of this 2, basically. Uh, so that's how that 2 goes away. And I'm left with this. And then you can use one, um, you know, one of these delta functions to evaluate this integral over k. And so that will make, um, you know, for example, so k will be p1 minus p1 prime. So I can plug that into this delta function, which I can write as this. And, um, you know, my k will become whatever it becomes. Um, oof. So, uh, yeah, so you get this. So it's after, you know, this point, it really just becomes basically a bunch of delta functions that you have to evaluate. And uh, yeah, 